Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Now, as you've seen from the opening clip, we're taking on the Capsule Corp opening effect. Now in the TV show, we all know that the capsules always just kind of go <coughs> and the item appears. We're talking bikes, cars and even houses. It's a cool concept, but there isn't really any way of doing this effect and not making it look cartoony. Well there is, but then it looks like this. Hey, where's your, uh... Right? God, I hate that movie. I mean, look at that again. The bike unfolds from a matchbox car, and if I freeze it here, the wheels just appear out of nowhere. What? Oh, and if I saw a quad bike spring out of something that small, I would be friggin' amazed. I sure as hell would have more of a reaction than... Cool. Sorry, I'm getting off point. My point being that the whole capsule idea is pretty silly and has no basis in reality. So let's embrace that idea. So in order to complete this effect, you'll need to shoot yourself and the vehicle in the same shot and a background plate with neither of you in the shot. I've also filmed some close-ups of me tossing the capsule, which unfortunately is a foot stinks bomb from my turtle blimp because I couldn't find a capsule prop in Australia that wasn't crazy expensive. But if you can get one, that's awesome. Now let's get to work. All right guys, this one is a few steps, but it's not overly complicated today. So let's get to it. I've got both my clean plate and my footage set up in a comp ready to go. So our first item of business is to grab a screenshot of our bike. To do that, we hit Control Alt S and save a Photoshop still wherever you want and let's name it bike. We'll then import that son bitch back into our project menu and then drop it straight into its own comp. From there, let's grab the pen tool and draw a mask right around the bike. Now, I didn't take the helmet box off my scooter, so this mask took me quite some time to draw, and it was not fun, because we all know how much fun masking is usually, right? Right? Okay, once you're done with the mask, let's head up to Effect, Distort, and add Warp. Now let's change some settings. We'll change the warp style to inflate, the bend to minus five, and the vertical distortion to minus 100. We'll also hit the stopwatch on both. Next, let's skip forward to around 12 frames and then crank the distortion down to minus 16 and the bend to minus three. We'll then skip ahead two more frames, crank it up to eight, skip ahead four more frames, and then we'll zero out the bend and crank our distortion down to zero. If I show you a preview, you can see that it makes our bike sort of spring back a little bit, adding to the illusion that it's being popped out of a little capsule. But it's still big, thus our effect looks quite lame. Let's fix that. Now before we get to scaling, grab the anchor point tool and then drag that anchor point right down to the bottom. Let's hit S to bring up scaling, hit the stopwatch, crank it down to zero, we'll then skip ahead two frames, crank it up to 2%, then we'll jump to the 12 frame mark and crank it up to 100%. Now let's see a preview. Mucha better, eh? We're almost done with the bike's release, but I'm gonna add a little bit more flair, just to make sure we truly embrace the cartoony nature of this effect. Let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, stay up there, go to effect, distort and add liquify. What I'm gonna do is shrink the tire at the front and have it sort of pop out a little bit once the bike's you know, at full size. To do that, let's head up to say frame 13, grab the pucker tool, increase its brush size way out to about 400, and then let's shrink that tire down a little bit. That's good. We'll then hit the stopwatch on distortion offset and percentage. We'll then go frame by frame, adjusting that mesh offset to marry up with our tire. I tracked it forward to the end of our animation and then tracked it back to around about frame six. From there, let's animate the distortion percentage. Let's crank it down to zero for frame six. We'll then skip forward to frame 10, crank it up to anywhere from 70 to 100% on your preference. Skip to frame 13, crank it down 10%, and then skip to frame 16 and drop it right down to say 6%. We'll then add a little bit of spring by skipping to frame 18, cranking it up to 9%, and then finally skip to frame 20 and crank it back down to zero. Let's turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer and check out a preview. Pretty cool. Now that we have our bikes release done, 
Time to comp it into our shot and add a little flair. Now, first things first, we need to get that other bike out of our damn shot. So here's what we do. Grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask around the bike area. We'll then hit F and feather it all out. Done. So just like I said around 20 seconds ago, let's drag and drop our bike comp into our footage. As you can see, our position is a little off, so our bike doesn't look like it's coming out of that capsule. Let's scrub to when the bike is all done animating, hit P and hit the stopwatch, let's then head back in the comp to when we first see the bike sort of emerge, drag that position so it's sitting right on top of that capsule. Preview time? That's much better. But it still looks pretty lame on its own, but that's where our flare comes in. Let's hit Ctrl D to duplicate our bike, we'll then head to Effect, Stylize, Find Edges. We'll then invert it by checking this box and move the blend with original to 13%. Next, let's go straight back to the same section and add a glow. Let's tweak some settings. Glow threshold to 17.3, the glow radius to 36, the intensity to 6, the composite original to behind, the glow operation to screen, and because we want to dictate the color of our glow, we'll change the glow colors to A and B. We'll then change the white down here to a nice bluish color. Whew. Once all that's done, let's change the transfer mode on our new bike layer to add. It's looking good, but we still need a couple more little things. For one, if you download the lightning pack in the description, you can drop that straight on your bike and just animate the position and scale to match your bike. And if you don't like the animation, just redo it. We're all old hat at lightning animation now, thanks to the episodes in the description. Check those out if you haven't. Now before we move on, we've got to do one thing. We've got to animate the opacity of our glow so that it fades away when our bike is fully materialized. We all know how to do that by now. Hit T to bring up opacity, scrub to a point where you want to add your keyframe, hit the stopwatch, move forward a few frames, crank it down to zero, and maybe move forward a couple more frames, bring it up about 20%, and then move forward a few more frames and crank it back down to zero, just so that it has a little bit of a flutter before it fades out completely. Our next step is really quick. Let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, then head up to Effect, Generate, and add a light raise. Yeah, I know, another one of those. Let's grab the light raise center and put it directly on our capsule head and hit the stopwatch on intensity. Crank it down to zero, skip ahead one or two frames and crank it up to 70. Head to frame seven, add a keyframe, and then we'll head to frame 10 and crank it back down to zero. This gives a little light burst, hiding the fact that our bike doesn't really come out of the capsule. Our last step is only if you want to get fancy. Yep, he's a dandy. He's a real fancy boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I have a clip from Action Essentials 2 called Slow Sparks 1, and all I did was throw it in the comp under our adjustment layer, scaled it down a little, I then headed up to Color Correction, added a tint, then headed over to the Preset menu, typed Vibrance and added Video Copilot's Color Vibrance plugin, and let's change those sparks to blue. Now, let's fit those sparks into our capsule. We'll head up to Effect, Distort and add a Mesh Warp. And then, all we have to do is just squeeze these two sides in. Our final step is to speed those sparks up a little bit. Easiest way to do that, right click, head up to time and hit time stretch. We'll squeeze it down to say 75. Now, let's check out a damn preview. I almost forgot one thing. You may notice that underneath the bike, there's no shadow. So let's quickly add one, just to add a little bit more depth. Just head over to presets and type drop shadow. Just drag and drop that onto our bottom bike comp. We'll then stretch out that distance a little bit and adjust the angle. And then let's just crank the crap out of that softness. Now it's not an accurate shadow, but it just puts a little bit of something underneath the bike so it doesn't look out of place. You can get more detailed if you want, but for the purposes of this shot, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Mm, done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. So that's the opening of a Capsule Corp capsule. 
It's not overly complicated, and yes, it does look a bit cartoony, but that's what I was going for here. Sometimes you just have to embrace the absurdity of the idea. Otherwise, you end up with crap like Dragon Ball Evolution, which is essentially someone taking a giant crap, big old coily one, on a beloved franchise by changing nearly every fundamental thing about it. Just, if you haven't seen it, don't watch it. But that's my time, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. We'll be back next week with more Dragon Ball effects, so hit that subscribe button and you won't miss out. If you have an effect you want me to do, leave a comment below, hit me up on Twitter or the Facebook page, and as always, my fellow Z Fighters, keep learning!